Okay, welcome back again. And today we're going to be discussing moving from love, not shame. This is one of my favorite topics to teach people about. And one of my favorite things to help liberate people from is the story about shame. So let me start with a surprising piece of information. That is that shame was originally meant to be a protective mechanism. Shame was meant to be a protective mechanism. Now I know that today when you experience shame, it does not feel protective because it's very painful. Well, how about we describe the experience of shame? How might we define that experience? It's the physiological arousal that comes rushing through your system when your high-speed interpreters sense there's a threat rather than an opportunity. A threat is sensed, and the response to that to get out of danger is to rush through the shame physiology in you, your particular pattern for shame, or yours, or yours. There's common ground to that particular pattern, and I'm going to talk about that in polyvagal theory in just a moment. But people might describe the experience of shame as, for example, wanting to sink through the floorboards and disappear, or the experience of shame as wanting to suddenly evaporate or hide, or the feeling of being suddenly found out or exposed without your control or consent. And it's larger than embarrassment. It's larger than that. It's also not so much an emotion as it is a state that we interpret ourselves to be, a state that we define ourselves as, a state that we have labeled ourselves as, like I am shame rather than I'm feeling shame. When we look at it in this way, it's a biopsychosocial, neurological, physiological expression all at once happening. So shame as a protective mechanism can be very confusing because what then starts coinciding with the shame rush in your body is like a voice that sounds like an inner critic, an inner dictator, an inner task master. That voice that says, you're not good enough, you're broken, unworthy, flawed, unfixable, irredeemable. When those things are rushing through, those particular thoughts are very painful. They seem true by repetition. So let's keep that in mind that they're not actually true. You recall that yoga says we were born as this bobbling thing of awe and delight. A little bit of drool here on the side. We're not born as shame. But shame can cause us to be clouded in our vision. It can cause us to be isolated and to forget that awe that we were born as. 